my mother used to be close to Rajiv Gandhi and she shared the story with me. One time during an election campaign, Rajiv Gandhi's convoy was going and there was lots and lots of people but people didn't know where was Rajiv Gandhi because it was dark. It was in the night. So he had the presence of mind. He took out a cigarette box. There, there's this you know, shiny kind of paper that's there. He put that over on the top. He had a torch. He put the torch on that and then reflected on his face. And instantly the public went crazy. They were like, Rajiv Gandhi, Rajiv Gandhi, and then he got out of the hood and he jumped on the people and they were playing with him and you know, he's charming like that, very charming leader. So that's one aspect you can appreciate that he had the presence of mind to make himself visible to his audience, to his crowd, right? And quickly take advantage of that situation and, and get people excited. And that's the presence of mind, the personal branding aspect that most leaders have. Even if you look at Hitler, a year ago, some pictures of Hitler were released by his photographer who would actually shoot Hitler practicing his speech before his speech. Quite interesting actually that Hitler would spend a whole day or sometimes more practicing his physical posture, the way he would raise his hand and tell his photographer where to stand from which angle to take his picture. They would try multiple angles, he would show the pictures to Hitler and Hitler would say try this and I will pause at this word, I'll raise my hand and you'll take the picture from this angle. That's how precise Hitler was. Not appreciating this man, he has caused a lot of trouble for a lot of people, but he has influenced masses. And that's something to understand and to realize that when you want to influence people, you've got to be self-aware. You've got to know how you're being perceived and you got to see us from, from another person's perspective. Something uh, I appreciate about Henry Ford, he made a statement. He said, if you are able to understand you from another person's perspective, while keeping in mind who you are, then you got both the perspectives. You are the best negotiator. You can seal any deals. Very few people have that skill, but this skill can be acquired. I have acquired it over the time and I'm still I'm far from perfection, but it helps so much to know how I am being perceived, being self-aware and 90, 3% of our communication is nonverbal. Words are only 7%. So 93%, the tone, the dress that we wear, the way we speak, etiquette, behavior, etc. All of that put together is 93%. Very important that you watch yourself, record yourself, look in the mirror, somehow or other, figure out how to be better at presenting the best version of yourself. It helps you with dating, it helps you with negotiations, it helps you with getting promotions and higher pay. In fact, I helped one of my very close friends to double his salary. He was getting $50,000 a year. He literally like got $97,000 a year with one meeting and that has never happened in the history of that company. Just by training him and helping him focus on the non-verbal communication. But that's how powerful this part is that you might be talented and nobody might know about it, right? How do you exhibit who you are and what is your true value? That is personal branding. That is what I'm talking about. So I've written a beautiful article actually on developeroy.com if you go there. There's article called the science of being incredibly charming and I've broken it down beautifully how the mind works how the senses work all kinds of things about body language tonality etc etc to help you become charming regardless of how you look or how tall or how short you are whatever skin color you have doesn't matter read that article you'll find that useful